Comelec Commissioner Rowena Guanzon issues her separate opinion Monday, January 31 on the disqualification case against presidential pet Bongbong Marcos. Voting to disqualify Marcos, Guanzon says the son of the late dictator committed a crime of moral turpitude when he failed to file his income tax returns from 1982 to 1985. By failing to do so, Guanzon says Marcos showed a serious defect in one's moral fiber. Committing a crime of moral turpitude is a ground for disqualification under the Omnibus Election Code. Guanzon also notes Marcos was a public official at that time, having served in the provincial government of Ilocos Norte. She says Marcos acted as if the law did not apply to him. Guanzon earlier engaged in a public rift with Commissioner Aimi Ferrolino, the ponente of the Marcos disqualification case. The outgoing commissioner accuses Ferrolino of deliberately delaying the promulgation of the ruling so that her vote will not be counted. Guanzon is set to finish her seven-year term in the Comelec on Wednesday, February 2. In a statement Monday, Ferrolino urges Guanzon to stop conditioning the minds of the people that there is a delay. Insisting there is no delay, Ferrolino says Guanzon is destroying the Comelec's credibility. Guanzon's separate opinion and vote run the risk of being invalidated if the ponente fails to release a ruling by Wednesday. A Rappler source says under Comelec rules, a division shall decide within 15 days from the date it is deemed submitted for a decision. Guanzon says the time allotted for the division's decision has lapsed. The Philippine government places Metro Manila back at alert level 2 from February 1 to 15 as COVID-19 cases in the capital region decline. Aside from Metro Manila, seven other areas will be placed under alert level 2 in the same period. These are Batanes, Bulacan, Cavite, Rizal, Biliran, Southern Leyte, and Basilan. With Metro Manila reverting to Alert Level 2, the Transportation Department suspends the controversial no-vax, no-ride policy in public transportation. Meantime, the following areas will be under Alert Level 3 still on February 1-15. to In related news, the Senate on Monday, January 31, approves on final reading a bill granting COVID-19 benefits and allowances for public and private health workers during a state of public health emergency. A House panel recommends the filing of complaints against several officials of the Budget Department and formerly Pharmaceutical Corporation, except Michael Yang. In a statement Monday, January 31, DIWA Representative Edgar Aglipay says complaints of falsification of documents should be filed against the DBM officials and grave estafa against the formerly officials. The House panel doesn't include Michael Yang in its recommendation. Yang, who was Duterte's former economic advisor, was the financier and guarantor of Farmali to Chinese suppliers. If found guilty, the Farmali officials can be sentenced to life imprisonment. Spotify CEO Daniel X says the music streaming platform will add a content advisory to any podcast episodes, including discussions about COVID-19. In a blog post, X says this will help combat misinformation and will roll out to countries around the world in the coming days. 
The announcement coincides with the publication of Spotify's platform rules meant to guide content creators as to what's acceptable to the platform. The announcement follows some high-profile departures from the service. Musician Neil Young removed his music from the platform after demanding Spotify remove Joe Rogan's podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, for spreading this information about vaccines, with Joni Mitchell following suit in support of Young. Author and professor Brene Brown also said she will stop producing new episodes of her Spotify podcasts, though she did not discuss the reason for stopping production. Earlier this month, 270 scientists and medical professionals signed a letter urging Spotify to take action against Rogan's podcast, The Joe Rogan Experience, accusing him of spreading falsehoods on the podcast. The podcast, one of the most popular worldwide, was licensed by Spotify back in 2020, reportedly for over $100 million. Shortly after Spotify's announcement, Rogan goes on Instagram and Twitter to say he's pledging to try harder to get people with differing opinions on topics being discussed. The Philippine women's football team makes history as it clinches the country's first FIFA World Cup berth on Sunday, January 30. The Philippine team beats Chinese Taipei at 4-3, following a 1-1 draw in the quarterfinal stage of the AFC Women's Asian Cup 2022 held in Pune, India. Serena Bolden scores the winning goal for the Philippines in the penalty shootout after a couple of saves by goalkeeper Olivia McDaniel. The Philippines advances to the final four of the Continental Tournament, along with Korea, Japan, and China. The dramatic feat secures the Philippines a spot in football's most prestigious world tournament for the first time ever. The World Cup will be held in Australia and New Zealand in 2023. Meanwhile, in basketball, Filipino rising star Kai Soto scores a career-high 12 points in the new Australian National Basketball League season. Soto is currently playing for the Adelaide 36ers, which beat top-ranked Melbourne United at 88-83 on Sunday. <laughs> 